Well, what happens here with our clock is that it tells us the number of sharps. So this C has zero, as we saw before. And our D we saw had two, F and C. Now, we're going to fill in the rest. And this is going to tell you how many sharps we have. All right. Now, oh, now we're out of sharps. We're getting into flats. So that's kind of the circle in reverse. So sharps go this way. And flats, we're going to go over here. Go in reverse. And they also have six. So this is good to practice doing this. Now, this is great. Now we know how many sharps and how many flats are in any key. So if I say, how many sharps in the key of B? Well, five. How many flats in the key of E flat? Well, three. All right, so that's one great use of the circle. Now, the question, of course, comes, well, what are they? So A has three sharps, but what are the sharps? Well, sharps always appear in the same order. So I'll put the sharps over here. So we have F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. And you're saying, great. Ah, no problem memorizing that, right? Well, that's the good news. This order is also going to be in the circle. So it starts here. So these are where the particular sharps are. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's follow an example. Let's take the key of A. So, <coughs> excuse me. A has three sharps. We know that from our little clock. One, two, three. Now, what are the sharps? Well, I need to follow to one, two, three in this order. Or I can just use the circle, and I know it starts here, the order of the sharps. One, two, three. So the key of A has F, C, and G sharp. And if I was to write it all out, I would get A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and another A. Because remember, there's one of each letter name, and then I adjust where necessary. All right, well, let's do a flat key. So I'm going to erase some of this. And we'll do our flats again. So these are the numbers of flats. And you'll find that just like the sharps, our circle has the order of the flats. So let's do an example here. Now, first off, the order of the flats is as follows. And you might notice this is the sharps in reverse. Anyway, we have the flats, B, E, A, D, G, and then C is the same thing as B. Or C flat is the same thing as B. And F flat is the same thing as E. So let's do the key, what did I say? Let's do A flat, since we did A sharp. Now, if we go A flat, we take a look at how many flats it has. One, two, three, four. By the way, you know it's a flat key because it has a flat right in the name. And no key has both flat or sharps for major keys. So A flat, we want to make an A flat major scale. It has four flats. And what are they? Well, we could go in this order, which we also find on the circle. And we get B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. And then if we were to write out the whole scale, we'd get A flat, B flat, C, uh, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat. So that would be our A flat major scale, the notes. All right, so that's how you can use the circle first to find the number of sharps or flats, and then to find out what exactly they are. Now, I thought I'd throw in a few extras, because there's other things that the circle could do.
So these are separate things. Now I'm going to erase all of this. And uh, first off, let's talk about chord progressions in the circle. Now, most the most common movement for chords is by fifth. So for instance, if I have a C minor chord, the most common movement is for it to go to a G. And then the most common resolution for a G is going to be to a D. In jazz, you might have heard of a 251. If not, it's kind of an advanced concept, so don't sweat it, but know that it too is on the circle. Also, interestingly, the uh, one of the inter most interesting intervals is the tritone. It was called the devil in music at one point because it's so dissonant. And you'll find tritones on the circle are directly across from one another. So C and F sharp, E flat and A. Hey, it looks like a clock. All right, so that's where you can find tritones. All right, I'm just going to do a quick review. We talked about what a fifth is, C, D, E, F, G, G, A, B, C, D, so on and so forth. We talked about how B to F sharp is, is the tricky one, and how you have to remember it's not B to F, but B to F sharp. We used the circle to find the number of sharps in a key. Right. We also used it to find the number of flats, so on and so forth. Then we use the circle to find the order that the sharps occur. Starts there. And the order from which the flats occur. And that's about it for today. So I hope this circle helps consolidate a lot of different pieces of information. I mean, knowing how many sharps are in key, how many flats are in a key, knowing what they are and all of that. So I'll leave you with a uh, old music story. Uh, someone once asked Miles Davis, you know, if you p put the trumpet in the key of E flat minor, where is that in concert? Because it's a transposing instrument. So E flat minor, pretty bad. Miles said, back in the case.